Life Together 日産です。Hey guys, it's Wolfie here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm here with another money making method for you guys. Uh, so this one's the new installment for our engine swap series that we've been doing, and uh, it's an absolute cracker. So it's with the Skyline R32, not the Nismo that was uh, released in one of the last updates, but uh, the uh, the older version. Um, this thing's an awesome car and it's always been a real favourite of mine, it's probably my favourite uh, Skyline out of all the GTRs and uh, it's an awesome platform for the engine swap so it handles it really really well. So I've got a uh, 600 and 700 pp tune and set up for you guys and uh, I hope you like it and if so be sure to like and uh, comment, let me know how you go. Okay, so the Skyline GTR V-Spec 2 from 1994 is available currently in the used car dealership. It'll set you back 171,200 credits. So it's actually, uh, it's not super expensive. Um, it's an awesome car, even without the engine swap. Just uh, make sure that you don't grab this one, the R32 GTR Nismo, which was released more recently. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head to GT Auto, and of course, do the wide body and engine swap conversions. So the wide body is going to set you back 50,000 credits. And the engine swap itself will set you back 1.6 million credits. So it's quite a bit, but uh, money well spent. You're going to get that back in no time. So displacement's increasing to three and a half and uh, three and a half litres there. And the weight slightly down. Maximum power output is like more than doubled, uh, same with the torque, and the power to weight ratio is just absolutely bonkers. So we're going to actually add a little bit of extra weight uh, so that we can get a little, little bit more power out of it. So you're going to want to get the Type A front lip. Uh, side skirts don't matter so much, but I put on Type A. Um, the rear a diffuser you want Type B, and for the wing I've gone with the custom wing set and use the lower one, just in keeping with the uh, the style of this livery. Uh, but I don't think it really matters which one you use, as long as it's custom wing set. Now for the wheels, any aftermarket wheel's gonna do, um, and choose basically what uh, rim diameter you want, but you're gonna want the wide rim width and the wide offset. Okay, so. I'm going to just uh, power through this tune because there's a lot of information to get out. So you might want to pause if you need to catch up on anything. So we've got 623 brake horsepower. Um, maximum torque's obviously, you know, amazing on this thing. Acceleration performance is phenomenal. So 11.2 second quarter mile, 20 over the kilometer, and it's very stable. So we've got sports hards front and rear. Suspension is fully customizable. Uh, ride height is set to 90 and 90 front and back. Anti-roll bar is 6 front and back. Dampening ratio compression is 35 front and back. Expansion is 45 front and back. Natural frequency is 2.30 at the front and 2.50 at the rear. Negative camber is 2.4 at the front and 2.6 at the rear. We've got no front toe angle, but we have 0 0.20 inwards at the rear. So that's to the right. Uh, so LSD is fully customizable, initial torque is set to 10 at the front and at the rear. Uh, acceleration sensitivity is 20 at the front and 30 at the rear. And braking sensitivity is 10 at the front and 20 at the rear. Now this next one is pretty important, make sure you get the torque vectoring center differential. This thing is awesome, so when it's wet, I'm basically uh, I'm using uh, full four-wheel drive. Uh, total all-wheel drive, so I'm going 50-50 front to rear, so it's evenly distributed from front to rear, but then once it dries out, I'm moving it back up here to say 35-65 or 30-70 split, 
um, and I've even gone as high as 2080 split when it gets dry just so that I don't wear out my front tires too much so front downforce is set at 56 rear is set to 318 we've got the fully customizable ECU and it's at 100% we do have a bit of ballast, so 192 kilos, and I've positioned that back a little bit, so a bit more weight over the rear end. It's giving us a bit more go. Uh, power restrictor is set at 79%. We're using the fully customizable manual transmission for this one, and I've set it to 360 kilometers. Uh, I haven't actually done any work on the gears just yet, but may do in the future. So we've got the stock turbocharger. Uh, brake system is carbon, and brake pads are racing. I always grab the handbrake, it's handy, and uh, the brake controller I've set uh, slightly forward, but basically I set it forward when it's wet, and when it dries out, I push it back to save on those front tyres, and also help me swing the rear of the car around and increase my slip angle. Uh, I've got the steering angle adapter, but you won't really need it for this, and other than that, that's all the mods you're really going to want on this thing. Apologies for the audio quality on my microphone. I'm uh, using my headset mic as you can see at the moment until I can sort out a better mic setup. Okay, so we're taking this one to Tokyo Expressway for the WTC 600 event. And let's get stuck in. So I'm not really going to show you the much of the race. I'm just going to show you some of the uh, important points. Um, so as you can see, this thing takes off really, really quick. Uh, it manages to, to basically keep an even power band right up and down the rev range so you're not going to be too worried about spinning out um, except when you're coming out of say the final corner so just be a little bit careful when you do have the um, torque vectoring differential set further to the rear so as you can see first lap we're doing a 2 minute 18 and then we'd be straight into the 205s and just continue to do that. Now, as you can see here, I'm changing my differential settings to make it further to the back. So I've gone for 2575 and then eventually to 2080 just to try and save those front tires. And I'll also do the same with the brake, as you can see there. So my brake bias, I'm sending a little bit further back as well. Uh, that's just going to help me to save those front tires and on this 600 pp tune um, that's going to be important because the tires do wear pretty fast on this event not quite so much with the 700 pp but we'll get to that so as you can see it controls really well i mean it is a little bit heavy we're looking at uh, 1.6 ton uh, for this setup but with the four wheel drive um, and with the way i think i've uh, set up the shocks on this thing um, it actually handles quite well you just basically want to drive it like a big car you know uh, like a big powerful car which is what it is um, so yeah it knocks out some great great times as you can see there we're doing a two minute four I think some of you guys out there might get close to the two minute mark with this thing um, and yeah as always with this event I would suggest putting it on difficulty uh, hard or at least medium um, because if you put it on easy you're gonna have to lap uh, back markers probably twice and they're just going to slow you down um, but yeah you shouldn't have too much trouble getting around them um, with this car it's uh, yeah it's, it's pretty stable um, I didn't find that they were really bothering me too much unless it was on the last corner so there we go and I'd come through and knock out those 12 laps in 25 minutes and 14 seconds this thing can quite easily do under 25 minutes so there you go guys and of course we want to get our clean race bonus with this event and i don't think it's too hard in this vehicle you can quite easily uh you know win it and uh win it safely so i was lucky and actually got a six star ticket on that one so yeah uh, i hope you guys like this one i think it's awesome for this event and it's sort of given this event a new lease on life for me i was getting a bit bored um until i saw this uh this engine swap come out we have had it for the r33 and r34 but now we have it for this car Okay, so moving on to the 700pp tune, I'm just going to basically point out all the things that have changed. So we've got 849 brake horsepower on this one, and uh, the maximum torque's up as well. Quarter miles pushing out at 10.24 and 18.26 for a K. Uh, stability is pretty much just as good on this one, and the rotational Gs aren't too much higher. Uh, we're using racing hards front and rear, suspension staying the same, body height has been adjusted slightly up, so 91 at the front, 95 at the rear, so a little bit of a rake effect, slightly higher at the rear just to help with stability, 
Uh, we've got six and six for the anti-roll bar. 34 is now the front setting for compression and 44 for expansion at the rear. Natural frequency has stayed the same. Negative camber, I've increased slightly at the front for this one because uh, we could get away with it because of tie wear not being quite so bad. Our uh, toe angle is going to stay the same front and rear and our differential is staying the same front and rear. And obviously, same deal with the torque vectoring center differential. It really comes into play in this one. So yeah, when it's wet, um, I'm using uh, as much as 50-50 front to rear. Um, and then when it dries out, I'll move it back up. Uh, you probably don't have to go quite as high with this particular event. You can probably leave it on 35, 65 or 30, 70, and it won't wear out those fronts too much. So it really handles well on this course and it flies down the straights. So we've changed the rear down force, slightly taken a bit off and made it 312. The ECU is staying exactly the same at 100%. Ballast is the same. But we've moved it even further back, so that's just giving us a bit more weight over the rear tyres, and it's also increasing our acceleration performance. Power restrictors also increased up to 86%. Now, on this one, we're actually using the fully customizable racing transmission as opposed to the manual with the last one, and I've set that at 380 kilometres. Uh, once again, I'll refine this and probably play with the gears later. So, we're now using the medium RPM turbo on this build. And we've got the carbon brake system once again. Brake pads are racing once again. I always grab the handbrake. And we're doing the same thing with the brake controller. So when it's wet, I'm pushing it forward just to prevent me from sliding the rear end out under braking into corners. And um, yeah, I'm pushing it back once it dries out to help me rotate the rear of the car and get me a better slip angle. And other than that, there's not really any other changes. Um, and yeah. I'll give you a little bit of a look at uh, what to expect on the track. So as you've probably worked out, we're taking this build to Le Mans for the 700pp event. So obviously make sure that you've got the intermediate and wet tyres. And once again, I'm not going to really show you the race. I'm just going to point out um, a couple of things. Um, so as I said before, when it's dry, I'm basically putting the... Uh, brake bias a little bit back maybe to one or two um, and I used a little bit of um, a little bit more four-wheel drive so I had it set at 3565 for the center differential um, just at the start here until I got past sort of you know the first few corners um, and I'll just show you basically what this thing gets to on the straight because this is where you're gonna make most of your time um, so you're going to get this thing up to close to 350 k's, uh, I think I got it to. So at any given time you'll be approaching 340, 350 kilometers an hour down this straight and you're going to basically get into first place by the time you reach Molson um, down the end of the straight here. So after three laps, which are all consecutively under four minutes, um, on this event, unfortunately, I didn't get any rain, so I was just basically waiting for it the whole race. So I did four laps, uh, didn't have to change the fuel map or anything like that, and came in. Tires were a little bit worn at the front, but they weren't too bad, and I went back out praying for some rain. Uh, now, it was uh, a little bit sketchy at first with cold tires, but um, yeah, once they warmed up, I was fine to have all that... Uh, extra torque at the rear so as you can see here I went for the eight lapper rather than waiting after lap seven and knocked over that last lap and it basically only put me a, an extra two minutes and a bit over uh, over the half hour mark so yeah quite uh, quite a viable option to do the seven laps and then stop and wait with this car um, now I also uh, I decided I should basically try it out in the wet. Uh, I haven't uh, the first time I tried it, uh, but I took it out for a bit of a test and found that it was absolutely perfect, both on intermediates and on the heavy wets. And um, even when I had the uh, torque vectoring center differential set all the way to the back, I could power down the straight and get up to 330 kilometers an hour and the rear end wouldn't slide out on me. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, it's even fun, rather than using the 50-50 split, do as I was doing here and put it all on the back and have a bit of fun. Let this thing loose, because it's an absolute machine of a car and a whole, whole lot of fun. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoy this one. And if you do, be sure to leave a like. Until next time, take care. When you're running with the frack. <laughs>